Hey, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, and today we are in uh, our second installment of our walkthrough of the book of John. So this year, if, if you're just tuning in, this year we're doing things a little different. Instead of looking at a portion of every chapter of the entire New Testament, we're just starting in January, walking through John until we get to the end of it, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into another book after that. And so yesterday we uh, we saw that that Christ, this word in John chapter one, Christ, who is the later identified in verse fourteen, we were reminded that he is the the eternal one. He has always existed. We were reminded that he is divine. He is God. He is the second member of the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, all living together in perfect harmony. And uh, and and then we saw that he is creator. Now, through him, everything is made. And so this is the, this introduction, John's introduction to his reader of who Christ is. It's very theological. It's very much leading us to understand the significance of the incarnation and if you remember toward the end of the book of John, what we're going to find is these things are written so that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and we might have life in his name. And so, based on that, we, we continue and we pick up in verse 4. And in verse 4, we have a continued, uh, continued description of who this word is. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, what we find here in this text is this, this pre-existent divine creator. He is also the source of life. In him is life. This is where life comes from. Biologically, of course, he is the creator. We live and move and have our being because of Christ. He is the creator. In him is life or was life, but but more than that, this life is not just a physical life, but spiritual life is found in him as well. It says, in him was life, and then it describes what is in this life, and the life was the light of men. This life, it, it, it's the light of men. The text continues, it says, and the light, light shines in the darkness. Now, this is speaking of the incarnation. This is speaking about the, the spiritual reality that when Christ comes into the world, he brings light into a very dark place. This is not talking about this, uh, this visibility of light, like going into a dark cave and pulling out your flashlight and being able to see around. Rather, this is the, the moral light. The goodness, the, the light shining into the world, the reality is the world is a very dark place. And morally speaking, it is incredibly corrupt. You turn on the news tonight and, you, and you'll find that there is news story after news story of, of evil, dark, violent, selfish, greedy deeds. Uh, men and women, we, we act in our darkness. But with Christ... And his incarnation, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness cannot overwhelm it. The, the darkness doesn't have any tactical advantage here. The dark, darkness, it, it cannot out-strategize the light. The darkness cannot overcome the light. Now, this is, this is wonderful because application-wise, this speaks to you and I in some incredibly significant ways. Uh, first, uh, first off, maybe you're listening to this and, and you're walking in darkness. You're living in sinfulness. There is lust and greed and anger. There, there, is, there is an arrogance or a pride. There is selfishness. There is, there is violence or hatred. There, there is sin in your life. And you might feel like, man, I am in such a, I'm in such a deep, dark pit. I am so deep in the darkness that there's, there's no hope. Well, brother, sister, friend, I want you to hear. The light of Christ shines into your life. And his light is more powerful than the darkness. If you're willing to look to Christ, if you're willing to look at him who is the light of the world, we're going to find out later in John. If you're willing to repent of your sins and turn, repent and believe, turn toward Christ in faith. 
as the light of the world, the one who died and rose again to give you life, to give you eternal life. If you are willing to place your faith in him, his light will shine into your life no matter how deep and dark the pit of your sin is. And the darkness cannot overcome him. He can rescue you from your darkness. If that's you, I want you to sense that hope. I hope you know that that by faith, not by you being good enough, but by faith, the light will shine into your darkness. But, But this also applies to us another way. You know, maybe you're not walking in sin. Maybe you're not practicing sin. Maybe you're just overwhelmed by the darkness of this world. Every one of us experiences darkness in our families, in our job place, in our schools, in our neighborhoods. Many of us, we, we carry around uh, the darkness of drama. Some of us carry around uh, trauma and pain, sorrow, anguish, worry, angst, anxiety. We feel overwhelmed as if the darkness has rolled in like a storm cloud. It has sat right upon us and we feel like there is no escape, but there is. You may have to endure, but the reality is the light of Christ, if you have trusted in Christ by faith, The light of Christ is with you even in the deepest and darkest of nights. Even when it feels like there's no hope. Even when you're overwhelmed and overburdened, the light shines in our darkness. See, this is our ancient way for our modern day. To know that no matter how dark you have made your life with your own sin, Christ in his light can reach you. And to know no matter how dark this world feels because of the sin and the evil of others, Christ's light is there for you. This is the ancient way for our modern day. It's to hope in the light, to hope in Christ.